Hello physics students, let's take some quick practice at drawing some free body diagrams. Okay, so first of all, we need to look at the forces that we have involved. So we could have the force of gravity. We could have the force normal. We could have force applied, force friction. These are our four most common forces. These forces here come up in tons of different examples. So the force of gravity is the weight that's pulling us down. The force normal is how a solid object pushes back. So if I push down on the table, the table pushes back up on me. The table pushing back up, that's the normal force. FA, that's an applied force. That's a person doing something, that's an action. So that's either me pushing, it's a car engine moving it down, it's something or someone doing something. It's actively applying the force. FF, this small f is friction. Friction always opposes motion. So anytime we're moving, it's pushing us back. Now we have three other forces that also comes up. They're a little bit more specialized. So we have these guys. So FL, this is lift. This doesn't mean like I'm lifting up my marker. Lift happens in airplanes, helicopters, wings. It's because of Bernoulli's principle. The B is for buoyancy. Buoyancy is how things float. It's because um, there's different densities. The smallest density rises, the highest density sinks. T is for tension. That is along a narrow strip of like wire or cable or rope or chain or something like that. It's being stretched across there. That's tension, okay? So let's draw some, we're gonna diagram this. So remember, these are always diagrams. They are not pictures. So all of our objects are represented just by a rectangle. We're not trying to say what a photograph of the situation looks like. We're just saying this is a diagram. Because we're even putting things on this that you can't even see. Like you can't see gravity. You can see what gravity does, but you can't look at gravity itself. But we're still gonna represent that force. So if I had my marker cap just sitting on the table. There are some forces being applied to it. For example, gravity is pulling it down. So there's the force of gravity pulling it down. Now, I know that forces cause accelerations, but I don't see this cap accelerating. So there must be zero net force, meaning there's another force canceling out the gravity force. Now this is the solid object pushing right back up on it. That's the force normal. Now that's all the forces we have here. And this is the whole diagram right now. So there are three things to look for. One, that you have all the forces. There's an up force and a down force. We labeled them. This force pulling it down with gravity. This force pushing it up was normal. And the third thing is, these two forces are the same size. They're being perfectly canceled out, meaning it's at a constant velocity. The constant velocity, in this case, velocity equals zero. It's still constant though. Constant velocity means these forces must be canceling out so the arrows are the same size. If one arrow is bigger, that means we would have acceleration in that direction. So let's look at a car. And this car is driving at a constant velocity down the road. <coughs> let's say it has cruise control on. So we still have gravity pulling it down and the road is pushing back with that normal force. Arrows are the same size because there's a constant velocity up and down. Now we generally say that things are going to the right just because we live in a right-handed society. So we'll say that this is our applied force. That is the engine pushing the car that way. Now going backwards, we have a friction force because it's opposing our motion. Now we have to decide how big this force is. Is it going to be smaller, the same size, or bigger? The way we decide that is, in this example I said, constant velocity. Constant velocity which means no acceleration. No acceleration means no net force, which means this arrow this way needs to be about the same size as that one. Okay? No net forces. That's constant velocity. Now, if in a different example, if instead of my car is at cruise control, let's say I kick it into a high gear and speed up, all that means is that my applied force is now larger than my frictional force. So this is a car accelerating to the right. So I can at a glance see that these two forces are canceling out. I have constant velocity up and down. But left and right, yes, I have a larger force to the right. I am accelerating. I could also make a change in another example. 
that's my applied force. Now, keep in mind, looking at this, just because there's a larger arrow here doesn't mean it's moving to the left. It means there's a force to the left. So in this case, this car is driving to the right, but he's slowing down. So this FA, there's still a little bit of force from the engine, it's still idling, but there's so much more friction force slowing it down. So there's a negative acceleration that way, okay? The forces only tell us what our accelerations are. They do not tell us what our velocities are. And just because there's a force this way doesn't mean we're going that way. Look, our force applied, our car's moving to the right, but our friction's pulling us to the left. Okay, let's look at just a few more examples. For example, uh, let's do a, you're holding a balloon, you let go, it's now leaving you. So, you're probably about to cry soon, but in the meantime, you still know that gravity's pulling it down, but in this case, it's not at a constant velocity, it's actually accelerating, so this arrow needs to be bigger. Now remember, the force normal is only for solid objects pushing back. The reason this balloon is going up is because it has less density. It is floating. We call that buoyancy. And there are no, no forces out of the direction. I assume this is a, not a windy day. Let's consider an airplane going down the runway, taking off. <coughs> Gravity pulls down on it. The runway is pushing up. But in this case, <coughs> we need to consider all the forces. In this case, there's a more important force than normal. So we always draw the most important force, the most affecting. In this case, the force of lift is picking it up. Air is going fast over the wings. It is rising into the air. It's also the engines are applying a force to move it down the runway. Now this force over here, this friction force, is going to be smaller. Because at a glance, you can see that this plane is accelerating up and to the right. Accelerating up and to the right. That's the point of our free body diagram, is to get a quick look, be able to scan that stuff and understand, oh, accelerating up and to the right. Okay. Now let's say that we have a, um, a sign hanging from a pole by a rope. So here's our sign. It's hanging, so that is force of gravity pulling it down. We said it's hanging from a rope, so it's pulling it back up, keeping it from falling. Force of tension. So these free body diagrams, don't make them too hard. Just think about is the change in velocity zero? Is it constant velocity? Constant velocity means that we have the same size arrows, okay? No force, no force net. If the change in velocity is greater than zero, or less than zero in case of a negative. That means we have acceleration, which means we'll have a larger arrow in one direction than the other because there is a force present. So consider those things whenever you're drawing them. You need to know what direction the forces are in. You need to label them with the appropriate labels. And you really need to make sure, are the arrows one bigger than the other? Is it accelerating? Or are the arrows the same size? Constant velocity.